Hey everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Mama Pies Before the Lesson podcast. I'm your host, Carlos Smiley. Now, on last week, the Apostle Peter provided the ingredients for the building of sustainable life in Christ. Faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. He further informed that if, and that's a big if, If these things abound in us, then we could be fruitful in the knowledge and the witness of who Jesus Christ is. You see, Peter was speaking from a position of knowing Jesus Christ, having walked with him and talked with him and having found a special place in Jesus's heart. The Lord Jesus told Simon Peter that Satan desires to sift you as wheat, but I prayed for you, basically saying that I've canceled that exercise. I pray that your faith, your faith faileth not. And when you have received the promise, i.e. when you truly get the Holy Ghost, rise up, go forward throughout the world and strengthen the brethren. On Sunday, the title of the lesson is Hope Through Stewardship. Scriptural basis of our lesson is found in 1 Peter 4th chapter. So the question that I have, and maybe you do too, is how did we get from there? A forthright guide on how to live right, how to walk right, how to talk right, how to treat your brother man right, how to love right, by the Apostle Peter to the saints at Asia Minor. How do we go from there to here? And encouraging hope and empowerment to live your best life through Jesus Christ. Helping people to understand that Jesus has already done the dirty work. You see, he hung, he bled, and he died on the cross at Calvary so that we can live again through the richness of the gift that he bestowed upon us. Hopefully after today's conversation, we'll better understand that we got this. All that we have to do is to let go and let God use us in our calling and in our elect, all according to his purpose. Now let's dig into this thing and see can we figure some stuff out. The Apostle Peter, having lived a life that would be top rated on any of today's reality shows, continues to try and help the saints in Asia Minor to understand the very special gift that they had been given through Christ's sacrifice on the cross and their willingness to accept the believe who he is and his role in the relationship to the father. He further wanted them to understand that there were still many people in the world for a myriad of different reasons that just wouldn't believe. They just wouldn't accept the immutable evidence that Jesus was sent by his father to redeem and save a world that was lost, lost in sin. Jesus is the only connector and restorer of that priceless, precious relationship. So as Peter was teaching and giving the saints a more intimate insight into who Jesus is and what he meant to him during his time on earth, he was also putting in place the building blocks of how to sustain a solid life in Christ. He shared with them that their conversations needed to be honest and forthright, even in the face of opposition, even as evildoers speak against you, still let your good works shine through. And y'all need to remember, this is the same dude that cut a man's ear off because he didn't like the way that a conversation was going. (laughs) Y'all remember Jesus had to put the man's ear back on. Further, Peter admonished them to submit to the ordinances, the rules and the regulations of the government. Look to the example of Jesus, who being accused of every crazy trumped up charge that the Sanhedrin could come up with, he submitted to their law ultimately allowing himself to be put to death because of their evil, selfish, and sinful nature. 1 Peter 2.15 tells us, For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Then he says, Honor all men, love thy brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Peter taught them on how to conduct themselves in business using Jesus as the example on how to conduct ourselves. 
Give your best with the good bosses that you may encounter, but also give your best with those that may be a bit difficult to understand and get along with. He says, for what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently. This, this is the acceptable will of God. The Apostle Peter further spoke to the church at Asia Minor on the topic of marriage. Wives, be accountable to your husbands. And likewise, husbands, be accountable to your wives. Mutually, put faith in one another, but ultimately, have faith in God. He tells them to, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them, that being your wives, according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, Love is brotherhood. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Peter then elevates the conversation, sharing how important it is to be respectful in all life situations. Remembering that we've been called into the inheritance of God so that we could share in the eternal blessings of God. What's remarkable here about this conversation is us having the opportunity to, in hindsight, to take a 30,000 foot view of Peter's life in totality. This brother, one of little faith, as he was granted permission to walk on water, on water. This brother, one who denied Jesus three times at Jesus' lowest earthly point in his life, no less. Yet, the totality of his life was unique, special, and one definitely worth living for. To have walked with God, talked with God, cried with God, experienced unimaginable high points with God, and ultimately being given explicit instruction by God himself to carry on the work of the gospel, to feed my sheep, spread the gospel, and in so doing, strengthen the brethren. Even at his own crucifixion, humbling himself to the point where he considered himself unworthy to die in a like manner as his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, don't just crucify me and hang me on a cross. Crucify me. Hang me on a cross, but hang me upside down. This brother, a simple fisherman from Bethsaida, more so than possibly any other person in the annals of history, was well qualified to give counsel to the churches in Asia Minor. So on Sunday, we'll hear the Apostle Peter tell the saints to adjust your attitude. Arm yourselves with the same mind as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Do this so that you won't live the rest of your lives in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. He told them to not concern themselves with the opinions of those people that knew them prior to their God experience. Peter said, in regard to these, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge in the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. Finally, brother, finally, he tells him to be sober, to watch and to pray. But above all things, have fervent love amongst yourselves, because it's love that covers a multitude of sins. Hey, I'm looking forward to next week's lesson as we go back in and dig a little deeper here on the Before the Lesson podcast. Remember to subscribe to our Mama Pie Sunday School class YouTube channel. And until next time, be blessed. Listen.